Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Q&A video, but before we continue, let me share with you the bag that I am currently using, uh, and that is the Louis Vuitton Alma PM in Multicolor Noir. The reason I am using it is because I have been so on the fence with this bag. Do I want to sell it? Do I want to keep it? So I'm going to keep using it till there's something that tells me you're crazy. Keep it in your collection or you know what, many, it's time to move on. So <laughs> the Alma PM in Multicolor Noir. All right, so let's get started with the very first question uh, from New Tran. Have you, have you ever planned to downsize your Louis Vuitton collection? I just wonder because I did for my Louis Vuitton bags and I feel good about it. Some of my bags I haven't used in months. I use that money to get the bag that is on my wish list, and now I know I will use it more. Uh, I feel the same way. If uh, something sits on your shelf for way too long and it's just pretty much collecting dust in a sense, uh, I would rather put that money towards something that I really, really, really want. Um, however, there's not really something that jumps out on my wish list. There's a few things that I want to get here and there, but nothing that... I have to have. And uh, I do. I think I'm going to be downsizing probably within the next couple of weeks, maybe next couple of months. Uh, you know, I've been trying to go through my items and see, you know, do I really use them? Do, is it something I really, really need? And uh, just go from there. But yes, I definitely see myself uh, downsizing. <laughs> uh, okay. Heather Aguirre and life's little luxury had similar questions. So I kind of put them together. Uh, I am looking to buy a black structured leather bag. I had my heart set on the Chanel GST. However, they have been discontinued from, from what I have been told. And I don't get the same butterfly feeling about the replacement bag as I did when I saw the GST. I, f I like the fact that the GST has the organization to it as I need to be able to find my items quickly. I purchased the Louis Vuitton Montaigne GM in Emprunt Noir and ended up returning it because I didn't like the way the strap attached to the handles and how it hung on my body. Um, I wish the strap on the Emprunt bag attached the same way the monogram one does. So is there any bag that you might suggest? I carry a lot with me as I am a mother of six and the young being just two years old. Uh, and it has to be a shoulder strap or have a long enough drop to be able to put it on my shoulder when needed. Uh, okay, so I, you know, it's funny because I was actually doing some research on the Montaigne last week and I I, uh, I found a few people that thought the same thing, that it doesn't, it doesn't feel the same way as the monogram one does, but they don't want monograms. So, uh, it's very interesting. So thank you for, for sharing that for the, for, especially for the viewers that are thinking about getting the, the Montaigne GM. Uh, okay. So I do have three suggestions for you. They are all black. Uh, two of them are in Epi. One of them, or one of them is in Enfront. And uh, I feel that they have great silhouettes. Uh, most of them come with shoulder straps and they do have pockets for organization. So it's not just an open, uh, it's not just an open bag where you could just throw all your stuff in there. There is, there are little, you know, slots where you can put different things in there. And I think it might, it might end up helping you out. I don't know. I feel that they all have organization. That is what I wrote on my notes here. <laughs> uh, the first one is the Marley MM. It's a little bit of a larger bag. If I'm not mistaken, it's 14, is it 13 or 14 inches in length. I don't remember, but it is $2,810 here in the States. Epi. So Epi is great because it's carefree. You never have to worry about it. It does come with a shoulder strap. And I think that it's, um, especially the, the MM cause the, the smaller one, the BB it's, it, I feel that it kind of hangs on the body really weird, uh, even though it is a very nice bag, but I really like how open it is. So it, it very much so reminds me of the GST cause it has that same, you know, the two handles, you open it up and you can see everything at a glance. So I like that. Uh, the next one is the Trocadero, which is 2880 here in the States. And this is on prompt leather. It has one shoulder strap, uh, and it is quite, I mean, I think it's very generous. It's not super long, so it's just going to hang, you know, incredibly so, but I think it has just the right amount of a strap drop. And, uh, it might look a little weird when you open it up, um, especially from the pictures, but I still feel that it has that same, um, organization that you would want with an on-prompt, with an on-prompt or with an on-prompt bag that has, um, that has those features. So I think that's great. And the third one is one that actually, I don't think it's talked about at all. <laughs> it has been around for a very long time. It is an Epi bag and it retails for $23.50 and I'm talking about the Saint Jacques. Uh, it's just a very plain black bag. It has a very generous strap drop because it, it does have two shoulder straps and it's just, it's just plain, but it's, 
I think it's an essential. I think you, you, everything that you need to carry, you can. And again, it's epi, so it's very, very carefree. So you can try out those three. Um, you know, maybe you might find something different, but when I was, uh, when I was looking at all the bags and I thought about as far as functionality goes and organization and as far as being able to get inside of the bag, I think these three are probably the easiest to get in and out of while not losing what it is that you need in a bag. Uh, okay. Celeste Pina four. I can see that you keep your bags in their dust bags. Do you recommend it or is it just your preference? I'd like to know because I'm looking to buy a bookshelf also, and I just like to know your input. Uh, this is my preference. I, um, <laughs> I pre obviously I prefer to use it this way because some of the bags are lighter than others. And because this room does have two pretty big windows, I do tend to get quite a bit of sunlight in here when I, when I open my blinds, cause I don't always open them up. <laughs> so I want to try to preserve the canvas, the leather, whatever it is in their dust bags as much as possible. Because once you get direct sunlight onto your items, the, uh, the Keta will start to patina a lot quicker. And, uh, sometimes you run the risk of the fact that your bag, your lighter colored bags might change color. So that is why they are in their dust bags. Uh, it is kind of boring though. Part of me really wants to take them out of the dust bag. So when I do a video, you guys can see exactly which bags I have, but I am, <laughs> I am such a, <laughs> I don't know. Like every time I try to do it, I'm like, there's no way game over. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I'm crazy. Cause I, I think every other YouTuber has them open for the most part. Uh, but not this girl. <laughs> uh, okay. Myra Phillips, please talk about the GM agenda. Is it really going away? What about the 2016 inserts? Everybody seems disappointed. Do you know where else to get inserts that will fit? Uh, I know Filofax has one and, oh, there was another company. I don't remember. Um, if I remember, I'll make sure and put it in the description box below. But as far as the GM agendas, it's funny because I was actually talking to one of my girlfriends uh, last week and uh, she she said that the sales associate, she bought a GM agenda and she said that the sales associate told her that they're getting that much harder and harder to find. So yes, uh, I think that eventually they will be um, maybe just, maybe not discontinuing them because I don't want to, I don't want to spread a rumor that's that obviously I don't want to, I don't want to spread rumors, <laughs> but, uh, I remember the sales associate told me that, uh, they want to just completely get rid of the GM agenda. Uh, so I don't know how long that's going to take. I don't know if that's what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to uh, do the same thing that they did with the multicolor line, kind of just, you know, take back a little bit in, a, a little bit at a time. I have no idea, but, um, what do I think about the, what about the 2016 inserts? I'm not a fan. I actually stopped buying inserts two years ago uh, because I started just using the notes. The notes is easier for me because I have very large writing and sometimes when I just start writing, I just go all over the place. I don't want a very confined space. So for me, that's better. Uh, and I have my phone for, the, for my calendar or anything like that. So I didn't need the inserts. Uh, I know that when I first started buying them, I literally, I'm here to tell you, I bought them just to buy them because I thought that's what I wanted. And it wasn't, I was wasting a lot of money because they are very, very expensive. Uh, but if you have other suggestions for the GM agenda, as far as inserts go for whatever reason, I'm having a major brain fart mo moment, but, uh, let us know in the comment section down below. All right. Next one, Toyar J374. Have you heard a rumor that Chanel will no longer service bags when the people bring them in and can't show proof of purchase? Is it, tr is this, if this is true, why would I buy a bag from the store that I know I can't resell because there's no reseller market because the person buying won't have a receipt? Why would I ba buy a bag from Fashion File or Yogi's Closet if in the later years I have nowhere to take it to get it fixed. Apparently there is an Hermes store, Hermes store in Canada already instituting this type of policy. I actually had no idea. Um, this is the very first time I'm actually hearing about this. So I'm curious as well. I wonder, um, I wonder if that's what they're going to do. And it's funny, I, you know, it's funny because I had a few people leave comments on a few other Minx Mondays that they had purchased items from, uh, 
from uh, from consignment shops and they take it into Louis to their local boutique to try to get it repaired because you know what whether it was the handle or, or stitching or something like that they went to get it repaired knowing they knew that the item was authentic and Louis Vuitton turned them away and said um, we're sorry you didn't buy this here so I don't know that's funny because uh, I don't know I don't know if that's what's gonna happen uh, I have never had any problems with it I have taken items into my boutique and obviously with the emprunt clay, you guys saw that, or I told you guys about that. And that was what, a month ago maybe? And I haven't, I didn't get any problems with it. So I don't know if it's just the freestanding stores or I have no idea. If any of you know, uh, you know, any more details on this, let us know. I'm very, very curious because if that happened with Hermes, and like I told you guys that those people have been having problems with Louis Vuitton that, oh, you didn't buy this here. There's no proof of it. That makes no sense. That absolutely makes no sense. Again, this keeps adding to, you know, the, <laughs> the what is going on? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I, I get it. I understand that they, they want to be exclusive and they don't want people to buy the pre-loved market or to do the pre-loved market because they want them to buy them new from the boutique. I totally get that. But at the same time, you know, if you don't get someone that's going to come in to do a repair, how do you know they're not going to see something brand new that they really like? So uh, it's kind of like, I, I don't know. It's, oh, we got to do, I got to do some more research on this. I got to find out. <laughs> this is very, very frustrating. Uh, okay. Um, Michelle Hudgens. I'm going to visit my sister in a couple of weeks and I was wondering if you had any advice on how to pack my Speedy 25 in a suitcase. I'm planning on using a bigger purse and a roll-on bag as my two carry-on items, but I want to use my Speedy when I get to California. I'd prefer my Speedy... I'd prefer to have my Speedy in the roll-on to take on the plane with me. Should I fit it? Should I... Should I... Oh my goodness. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> should I fill it with air paper and put it in the dust bag? What would you suggest? Uh... Okay, so this is a great question. Uh, when I actually bought a, uh, when I bought my Speedy the first time when I was in Paris, I thought about putting uh, tissue paper in there to make it a little bit fluffier. Instead, what I did is I actually left it folded up the way that it should be until I got to my destination. Because if uh, if you have a lot of items in your um, on your carry on and you might. It's, it's kind of tricky because obviously it's, if it's, if it's a canvas bag, you won't ruin the canvas, but I think that if you leave it in your roll on, you might get it smashed, uh, versus if you folded it, it or it's already folded and you will just have those folds. And then once, once you open it up, uh, those folds will go away. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer, but if, it, if it's only a flight, uh, I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll hurt it. And, um, that's what I would suggest. You could do either or if you don't have a lot on your carry on, I would fill it with air paper and do it that way. That way you have it and it's nice and full. Uh, or if you have a lot that you're taking with you, I would just fold it the way that they come when you first buy them and then go from there. And, um, I, you know, I, I have some things that I want to talk to you guys about as far as flying. Cause I had quite a few questions, uh, on how I brought my items back from Paris. So hopefully I don't forget at the end of this video. <laughs> uh, okay. Nicholas Humphrey, Humphrey, I see a lot of people try to clean their dark viquetta on their monogram Louis Vuitton bags to seal or protect it when it's new. Do you agree with either? I'm torn. I personally would be so afraid to touch my new Neverfull or Speedy with a third pa third party protectant. Uh, for those of you that have been watching me for a while, you guys know I do. I absolutely do not um, protect my bags whatsoever. Um, some... Some of the companies out there are fantastic. They will bring your Viquetta back to life. Uh, you know, if it's really, really dark, I think there'll still be a little bit of a, not a stain, but a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, the, something left over. Uh, for, I am having the hardest time thinking today, so I apologize. Uh, but... You know, I, I feel that most of those items also add to the fact that the Viquetta gets extremely dark because you're putting that item on there versus having just natural patina like this. Uh, this is an older bag and, you know, I never cleaned it. I thought I was going to and it just has that natural honey patina. I think if I was to protect it over time, it might turn darker and I'm not 
I, I'm not a fan of that. I rather have my Vaquetta um, tell a story, you know, and usually when you get those brand new items, I am the same way. I feel like I want to put it in a protective bubble. And uh, <laughs> when it gets its first scratch, I know where it was, you know, because half the time, I think 99% of us will go, oh, that wasn't there. I I rubbed up against this or, you know, I got it during this rainstorm or, you know, we're, we're so careful because we're always examining our bags and we know when there's something that got scratched or da not damaged, but you know, you get those little, I call them beauty marks <laughs> on your bag. And I think that's okay. I think, I mean, you, yeah, I, I, it doesn't bother me, but I personally do not prefer to use the third party protectant. I agree. I'm the same way. But this isn't a knock against anyone that does it because there is an entire world out there that would disagree with me. Uh, but it's just not for me. I'd rather just have that beautiful uh, honey patina. Uh, okay, Sarah Grico, uh, how do you determine how much you sell your items for? I'm going to sell my Speedy 30 and I don't want to rip someone off, but I don't want to take a huge hit. Uh, the thing that I do the most is actually I assess my bag as far as the condition, you know, how, how, excuse me, how old is it? Um, and you know, does it have a lot of beauty marks? Does it not? Is it in pristine condition? And then I will go on to fashion file, Yogi's closet, eBay, Mallory's. I will go on to all those consignment shops and kind of find some of the bags that are more similar to the condition that mine is in. And then go from there. I will either, you know, bump it up or uh, lower the price depending upon how it looks. So I honestly think that's the best thing to do. Uh, you know, and sometimes uh, the bags that are not very popular will have lower resale value regardless if they're Louis Vuitton or not. But it's just because, a you know, popularity counts with these bags. I honestly, I hate to say it, it sounds like I'm back in high school, but it does. Uh, obviously, a Speedy and a Neverfull will always sell better than... Um, than the Hudson PM, for example, from Louis Vuitton. It's, I think it's a cute bag, but it just, it's not, it doesn't have the same retail value. Someone will be able to snag that speedy or that never full quicker than the other one. Uh, you, sometimes you need to find that specific buyer. So, um, just a, a, a little bit of, a of some help there, hopefully. <laughs> uh, Lady Susan Jane, just thinking, men, maybe it's just saturation of one thing. I think it's normal to love something and then become bored eventually. Perhaps you are subconsciously wanting to branch to newer things. Maybe Hermes, LOL. What do you think about this? Uh, and this is in reference to the fact that I said last week that I'm I feel like I'm falling out of love with Louis Vuitton and you know, it could be, it could be the fact that, you know, I have been, uh, buying this brand for such a long time and, you know, it's funny cause I, uh, I don't feel that I can appreciate the new designer, Nicholas Gasquier. I can appreciate, uh, his, in, uh, his innovations as far as, you know, the bags go and the styles and things like that. And I actually left a comment on, uh, on another subio that left uh, a question for me. I feel like they're trying so hard to be different, to try to, uh, I feel like they're, they're, I feel like they're spending more money on trying to be edgier and cooler and this, this, and that when they don't need to because they've been around for over a century. So uh, just stick to the, just stick to your traditional roots. I think that's what's great. Uh, you know, and I said the same thing about Hermes last week. I think when they stick to what they have been doing for such a long time, it doesn't mean that they're boring. It just means that they are traditional and there is nothing wrong with traditional, especially when it comes to luxury goods. Uh, when you start adding, you know, zippers here and details here and f funky things everywhere, I just think it, you're just trying, you're trying too hard. That's how I feel. So I think that's, uh, like I said, this is in reference to what happened last week. And, um, I might, you know, I, I've been thinking about branching out, um, to other, to other designers but still there's, there's nothing that really gives me that wow factor. And I'm, I'm dying to find a bag that just blows my mind away, whether it's Louis Vuitton or, you know, Stella McCartney or Bottega Veneta, you never know. But I want a bag that just, I, I, you know, when I walk by, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to have this, <laughs> you know, it, well, if, if money permits, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's, I don't know. You never know. Uh, pink coffee, many with the quality of Louis Vuitton going down. Do you think it is wise for someone coming into the game now to buy Louis Vuitton or should I just save up more money and go for the, sh 
go for Chanel or something else. As I fell in love with Louis Vuitton about six years ago and and that is the quality that I want. Or the other option, only buy pre-love pieces that were made before the decline in 2006 or later. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, you know, if, like I told you guys last week, if, um, if someone that's been buying Chanel for a very long time, they started to see the decrease and they would tell me, you know, don't buy Chanel, go bigger, go with, go with Hermes. Uh, however, I decided to go ahead and follow my heart and I wanted to do Chanel and I haven't had any problems. Whereas, um, you know, some of those people are said, you know, the, the zippers, the hardware, the, this, this, and that. And I haven't found that with my Chanel's as of yet. So I don't think it's fair to, um, to tell you, Hey, you know, don't try Louis Vuitton. It's a horrible brand. Go higher, go bigger. I think that you should go with what you like. And, uh, maybe I, maybe I've just had bad luck with Louis Vuitton lately. Uh, it feels that way anyways, <laughs> but, um, you know, you'll never know if you don't try it out. And I, th I still think it's a great brand. Obviously I think it's a wonderful brand. Um, I'm not crazy about some of the new policies that they're trying to institute, but, uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say go for something else, especially if you, if you haven't had a first piece, I would still go with it and see how it goes. Maybe you'll have the same luck that I had with Chanel, uh, you know, where, where Louis Vuitton has absolutely no problems for you. Who knows? In maybe six months, maybe a year, they'll start to change uh, the bags completely and you'll never know if you don't try it out first. So no, I still think uh, it's a great brand. And then if you ever notice anything, you can always take it into the boutique and say, you know what, this and this and let them know what's going on with the, with the bag. I would never ever wait for any repairs. If the minute you guys see anything kind of funky on your bag, whether you think it's ridiculous or you think, you know, are they going to think I'm crazy if I bring it in? Who cares? They're freaking expensive. Go in there and, <laughs> and see what they say. I'd rather be safe than sorry. So yeah, no, anytime you see any little thing, I would suggest going in there. <laughs> uh, all right. And then the last question, uh, Jess Munoz four. What would you do if you found out a family member or friend was selling replica LV? Would you just ignore the situation or say something to them? Um, <laughs> I have had this happen. Um, not with a family member, but with a friend. And I'm not one to judge. I, I will keep my, up, you know, my opinions to, to myself. Uh, I might comment to my hubby and say something, but I will never say something to that person now. The minute you come at me and you're trying to tell me why am I spending money on the real thing when it looks like this, or uh, how about I sell you that? Don't come at me with that because I don't. Then you'll get an earful. Then you're you're really gonna you're gonna hear my thoughts on uh, <laughs> on replicas. But to each their own. Um, you know, everyone does things for different reasons. I might not agree with them, and uh, unless they ask me how I feel about it, then I will say something, uh, especially with family members. Sometimes it can be touchy. And if it's a really close family member, um, I think I, I still think I'd, I'd pretty much keep to myself unless it was my brother. Then I obviously me and my brother, <laughs> I would tell him, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> but if it's another family member, I would, I still wouldn't say anything, but yeah, don't come at me with, you know, start telling me what's so great about replicas because you're going to get an earful. <laughs> so yeah. All right, you guys. So that does it for the questions, but I did want to, um, I did want to touch base on what I told you guys about, uh, flying with your luxury pieces. I had quite a bit of questions on how the heck I got my items back to the States from, uh, from my European haul. Cause I got quite a bit of items. Uh, so first and foremost, I had a keep all 55 that I took with me and it was, it wasn't, it wasn't full. It had, um, just a few items in there, but I knew I wanted to bring most of my souvenirs back in there. And, you know, a lot of people asked, how did I bring the boxes back? How did I bring the shopping? I literally brought everything that the bag came with or that the item came with. Uh, and we have really large suitcases. So it made it really easy to be able to lay all the shopping bags in one suitcase. And then, uh, if I, t uh, I took my, Keep all 45, that one I laid, obviously, because it lays kind of like, it lays flat like a Speedy does when you first get it. So that one I laid on top of my suitcase as well. And um, the other bags, my Celine bag, I put in my Keep All 55. Uh, the Speedy, where did I put the Speedy? 
I left the Speedy in the box in my carry-on and the air the Chanel I put it in that's in that my, my husband has a carry-on and it's a little bit I don't know it's probably about this big and uh, he didn't have too many things in there either so we put all the all the items you know some of the items in his and some of the items on my carry-on so that way I knew where they were at all times just in case my luggage got lost, which it did. Remember my luggage got lost and it had my keep all 45 in there. So I was freaking out and I had all the uh, souvenirs that I brought my family members back. Uh, and, uh, th that's just what I would do. I would make sure that when you go over there or wherever you're traveling, you either have, uh, if you have two carry-ons, obviously that's a lot easier, uh, but make sure they're not too full. That way you can put all your items back in there. And like I said, if in case anything ever happens, if it gets lost, you know where they, you're not too worried about the clothes. You're more so worried about the bags that you're bringing back. <laughs> At least I would be anyways. Uh, and another thing is a lot of people have asked me, uh, taxes, how it goes when you come back into the States, um, and you know, you have to pay taxes. Uh, they give you, I believe it's 900, is it $900 or is it, I think it's $800 per person, uh, that you can take or that you can bring back to the States without getting taxed. Anything over that is a percentage, depending upon how much you go, or, you know, how higher you go up. And, uh, a lot of other people have asked me, you know, should I just say that I bought one thing on, uh, on the customs form when I come back into the, into the U S to be honest, you don't want to lie when it comes to any, uh, any official, you know, government paper at all. I, at least I don't, I won't, uh, because you can, I mean, they can find a way to find you as well as if you're, if you're lying about it. So I, you know, regardless, you're still saving money. Even if you pay a hefty price when you get into the States, uh, it's still not as much as if you were to buy the items brand new here versus how you bought them when you were in Europe or, or, or wherever it is that you got them. Uh, now I will tell you guys this. I, I think I literally had a horseshoe, you know, <laughs> because I didn't pay when I came back, uh, when I came back from my European hall or from my, from our trip to Italy, uh, I didn't pay when I came back into the States. And the only reason I think that didn't happen is because, uh, they lost my luggage. So the customs, uh, the customs officer, you have to go through two separate ones at LAX. And, uh, the, the second one, the first one was like, okay, you know, th you know, welcome home. And then the second guy, he looked over my customs form and he saw how much, you know, how much I had declared to come back into the States. And, uh, I remember he looked at me and, I think he was about to turn and get a form. And then I just, I told him like they lost my luggage and I showed him the paperwork that I had from uh, our airline. And he looked, you know, he looked at me, I, I have it all. I, I talked about it in my European hall um, or my Murphy's law video. If you guys are interested, I'll make sure and uh, link it below. But uh, I honestly think had I not lost my luggage and had he not looked over that paperwork, I would have paid I mean, a ridiculous amount in taxes. I honestly think that I felt it. I can, I could see his eyes just looking at his, like he was going to go towards his forms, if that makes any sense. And then when I said that, then he started talking about my lost luggage and then he started asking about where we went. And I just, yeah, I, I think my lucky stars that that didn't happen. But regardless, like I said before, if I had to pay, I had to pay because you know, uh, I think Nettie Ward said it the best. It, uh, <laughs> it pay. what did she say? It pays to play something like that, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's the same thing. So you, you got to pay the piper. <laughs> Sometimes you do, but I still think it's worth it. I think those prices are still amazing compared to here in the States. Uh, so yeah, definitely. I would not lie on any any forms, customs forms. Uh, some people do end up, it's, um, when you're in line for customs, you'll see people wearing their brand new pieces or they'll have brand new bags on them because they don't want to declare them. Some people do that as well. Uh, but you know, to each their own, I am not one to judge, but I'm just telling you guys what I, uh, what I do, but yeah, so sorry. I went, uh, I went into a little bit more depth on that, but like I said, I had tons and tons of questions on that last week. So I just kind of wanted to, to clarify. And, uh, I don't know, um, how this week is going to look. Uh, for those of you that don't follow me on Instagram, um, 
or the, for those of you that don't know, my hubby actually, uh, we had a funeral last week for his grandfather and the day that, uh, we had the funeral or the memorial for his grandfather, his grandmother passed away on the same day. So it's been very hard on him and, you know, I'm just want to, I want to be there for him. So, uh, I did take a few days off of social media as far as Instagram and that goes, but I don't know how this week's going to go because we do have a memorial to go to, I believe on Thursday. Thursday. So I might have to pre-film regardless. I don't know. I might just take some time off and just be with him. So if you guys don't see me for a few days, don't freak out. I'm still here. Uh, but I just wanted to let you guys know about that. So family first always. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all sometime this week. <laughs> and as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.